All right, hello once again. Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College. And as part of the Rankin Technical College AWD, or Application and Website Development Program, and in particular the AWD 1100 C Sharp Programming Language Fundamentals class, I've been doing a series of video presentations based on the textbook for the class, that being, as you can see on the screen, Muroc C Sharp 2015. So far, I've gone through the first three chapters an intro to Visual Studio, the next eight chapters, the C language essentials, so sections one and two. I'm in section three and I'm going to finish up right now how to work with interfaces and generics in chapter 15, which as you can see will leave me with chapter 16. Then it's database programming, more skills working with data, and finally enhancement and deployment. This lecture probably will not take very long, just because when I looked at it, there's only about five or six slides left. All right. So we're up to how to implement the I. Oops. Try that again. How to implement the I comparable interface. Now, because I comparable is a generic interface, you can use angle brackets after the I comparable interface to identify the type of objects that are being compared. All right. So in this case, product objects. To implement the I comparable interface, you must implement the I compare to method. This method returns an integer value that determines if the current element is less than, equal to, or greater than the element that's being passed in. And what it does is it returns a negative value if it's less than, zero if it's equal to, and positive one if it's greater than. All right. So shown here and on page 497 in the text is exam are our examples of code that goes through this. All right. So if, if you wanted, let's say that um, you have put in a bunch of members into a class, but they're not really in any kind of order. You could go in if you wanted to and technically put this in a loop, and you could put it in based on whatever, product code or whatever you wanted to put it in. So again, negative one, zero, and positive one, okay? All right. When you define a generic class, you can set constraints to restrict the data types that your generic class accepts. All right. What does that mean? Well, when we look here, here's the keywords that you can use with this. Class, which says that whatever you pass in must be a class. Struct, where it must be a structure and new, which means it must have a default constructor. You can't use this keyword as it says. It only works with classes, not with structures. So what you see here is a class that implements the I enumerable interface. All right. Notice there's a for each method in there and that only works on generic collections that implement the I enumerable interface. What that means is, as a result, if you want to use the for each on a generic cl uh, collection you've defined, you must implement the I enumerable interface. Okay. Also, when you implement the get enumerated method, you can use what's called the yield keyword as you can see right here, with the return keyword to return the current element to the object that implements the I enumerable interface and yield control. So here's a code example that uses this. When you define an interface, you can use generics like you do when you define a class that uses generics. So when you implement a generic interface that you've defined, 
you can specify the type argument, just like you would when implementing generic interfaces from the .NET framework. All right, and that pretty much is it. All right, for the chapter here. So what we will do when we come back is we will go over chapter 16, which should only take one lecture, as you can possibly see here. There, there are only 17 slides, and they talk about how to both organize and document your classes. So I'll be back with that in just a couple minutes.